Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, gonna be going over a quick upper right uh, premolar immediate implant surgery in this case. Here's the initial situation, 1-5 fractured off at the gum line. Uh, we plan to do an implant, so we did an immediate approach, um, extracted the um, premolar, placed the implant, put the healing cap, and then three months later, we'll put the implant. So here's some teaser footage, easy extraction, uh, osteotomy into the lingual, uh, portion of the socket, uh, place the implant uh, 4.8 by 10 or 12, and then screw it in. So here's a pan. Um, you can see that the there's no pathology. Very simple, straightforward, immediate implant site for this 1.5. And then here's the final. So um, again, the case in photos, and we'll get started from start to finish with the clinical footage. So we're going to freeze both sides with um, one in 200 articane. Preoperatively, uh, we're going to give him two grams of amoxicillin, 600 milligrams of Advil, 1000 milligrams of Tylenol. Um, two grams of amoxicillin has been very clearly shown to increase um, integration rate of dental implants. And then the Advil Tylenol is just for postoperative pain management. So um, I didn't trim any of the footage except for what I, um, when I was looking outside the mouth. So we're gonna lay a flap, a non-papillus ring flap, and then, <clears throat> and then peel that back until we can see a good buckle, um, buckle bone, appreciate the entire root. And then we're just going to start kind of wiggling it with our periosteal here against the neighboring teeth. Kind of do a little envelope on the lingual surface. Going to keep elevating with the periosteal. And then once we have some decent luxation on it, we're just going to grab it with some forceps. And nice and easy until the root comes out comes out nice and easy really only one conical single root and so we are going to get started with our osteotomy because the uh, cortical plate the lamina dura that uh, anchors the root is is dense bone I usually like to punch through it with a um, round uh, carbide burr on the implant handpiece just to perforate through the lamina dura and always doing it on the lingual aspect of the um, of the socket so that there is a good buckle gap that can fill in with new bone so that the buckle plate thickens up. And once we have that, then we're gonna start going with our osteotomy drills. Immediate implants, I'll typically use a longer length and I like 4.8 millimeter diameters for single rooted teeth, unless it's like an upper lateral or a lower incisor. And we'll open it up to a 4.5. We're gonna profile the tissue or profile the bone with the profiler, nice conical shape there. This is gonna be our last burr, the 4.5. Get it down to about 10 millimeters or 12 millimeters or so. Irrigate thoroughly with saline uh, before we take our implant and screw it in. So it is a looks like a 4.8 by 12 um, millimeter tissue level implant, and I get these from Blue Sky Bio. Once the uh, once the implant motor torques out, which I'll usually set to torque out at about 50 newton centimeters, then we will take our torque wrench and um, finish uh, screwing it into uh, the socket to our desired height. So we'll do that. And then the implant is in. You can see the buckle gap. Option to put some kind of biologic material in there, but there's a, a big wall of bone here and that's just gonna fill in with blood, which is gonna turn into bone. And I know that because I've left cases like this where there's a huge buckle gap. And then I went back in, laid a flap just for um, purposes of inspection for my knowledge. And sure enough, bone does fill in with it. So we'll screw it in. I don't think that we placed a biologic. We may have, but like I say, in my opinion, it's optional. 
And then around the collar of the tissue level, uh, the polished collar, any areas where it's overgrown by the bone, because we like to submerge it subcrestally, we might need to just uh, whack away the bone so that the healing cap can seat passively. We'll get an ISQ on it. And we would expect nothing but green by green, which we get. So we'll take the smart peg out. Irrigate again with saline to flush everything out, put our healing cap on. And then that's pretty much it. We'll can leave it like that. You can use a suture if you want. Um, but we decided to use a tissue adhesive. So just going to flush that area out with saline so that it fills in with fresh blood before we close it up. And we do use a tissue adhesive in this case. Tissue adhesive is going to work well. It's meant to be bacteriostatic or bactericidal, so there's no concerns about like contamination or whatever. You can put it right into wounds, and it's just going to disintegrate and absorb and heal up just like it would. Otherwise, there's the case. You know, patient's going to be back in three months. We'll take a scan with a scan flag in it, intraoral scan flag, and then uh, and then I'll make the crown with a um, with a stock um, abutment.